the tenth verse, he said, if you are incapable of practicing S stage S2, light has to be on. If you are not able to practice abhyasa, abhyasa refers to the karma bhakti jnanam. The karma bhakti jnanam, karma yoga, the path of action. Bhakti yoga, the path of devotion. And the jnanam, the path of knowledge. He prescribed it in the which verses? The sixth and seventh. In the eighth verse, he gave us meditation. Only a prepared mind can ever attempt to meditate. In verses nine and ten, he steps down to those who can't practice meditation. In the 10th verse, he said, if you are incapable regarding, regarding my action as supreme, performing action for my sake, you shall attain perfection. What he means is, when you perform your action, you should surrender to the totality. Understand that you are a mere instrument in the total scheme of things. Imagine yourself on a stage where there's an orchestra that's going on. As a musician, you will have to gel, you will have to go along with the totality of the entire orchestra. Even though you have an individuality, but you have a place on that stage only when you sink in with the totality on that stage and the orchestra. If you choose, if you define, think yourself, oh, I am this side. And I want to showcase my talent without taking everybody else on the stage who is part of the orchestra. You You may be an excellent singer. You may be an excellent musician. You may be an excellent, talented artist. But if you are standing out to showcase your talent, diminishing the entire orchestra, undermining that you have to play a a role. You may have a significant role. You may have, you may not have a significant role. Doesn't matter if you play your role, understanding that you are a part of the totality. That is when your part has a relevance, has a say, will count. But the moment you think, oh, I have a role. I, my role is more important and I want to stand out. The moment you stand out and not be in sync with the orchestra on stage instantly. Not only it spoils the orchestra, you are unfit for the orchestra in the future. So what the concept of surrender, surrender is to understand the totality of schemes around you. Everything around you has a totality, has a scheme, has a system, has a pattern. And when you live your life, you must sink your life, attune your life to the total scheme, total orchestra of things around you. And that is what is to surrender. So surrender is to first understand the cosmic orchestra. What a beautiful terminology. There's a cosmic orchestra. The cosmic orchestra is the totality around you. It is there with or without you. But you need to understand your role, understand the cosmic orchestra and just play your role as a mere instrument in that orchestra. 
That is what is true surrender. That's what he's saying. And if you regard my action as supreme, my refers to the, to the ultimate self, thinking of the higher, you perform your karma, you perform your action, you shall attain perfection. Now I'm reminded of a very, very famous verse in the 13th chapter of the Gita. You will see it on your screens. The 13th chapter, the 23rd verse. When it appears, I will quote. Very, very famous. Very apt in the context. Twenty-third verse. I don't. I think it's a wrong verse you have got there, ma. The Sanskrit verse is wrong. Which script? Where you have you got this from? The oh. same site where I do take every time. It looks like you've got a wrong verse because chapter 13, verse 23 is not this. Isn't it? It is not. Chapter 13, verse 23 is not this. Never mind. Remove it. Thirty-five years I've been reading this particular verse. You tell me not. Pushpama, thirty-five years I'm doing. Huh? No, this is this has been there for thirty-five years in my, in my book. So you're saying this is wrong? Huh? Guruji, can you just start the word? I'll just check it up. No, I need to establish the number of years I've been. Because people are doubting and questioning my authenticity here. I need to re-establish that for good. So that people don't doubt again in the future. Pushmama, have I established enough? Ah. She better surrender. Otherwise, every time she's saying, what, 30 years? You're saying that. I said, I changed the, the figure from 30 to 35. It is 35 years now. So I have to mention what is there, no? So the, the verse is, Upadrashthanumantacha bharta bhokta maheshwaraha paramatme tyucha pyuktaha dehesmin purusha paraha. Once again, Upadrashthanumantacha bharta bhokta maheshwaraha. Paramatme tyucha pyuktaha dehesmin purusha paraha. Outstanding verse. What is the number in your books? Uh, because some of the books, they either 701 verse or 700 verses. Actually, it is 701 verse. So some books will print one verse less and the numbers will change. So... Gaitima, next time, please double check with me. Because there is that one verse difference. Most of the time, she gets it right. Now, the, the translation, I'll explain this. He says there, ah, there you go. Thanks, Ma. So the Supreme Purusha spirit in this body, Supreme Purusha refers to the Atman, the reality, or the God in layman's term, you can say. The Supreme Purusha, the spirit in this body, what is it said to be? It is said to be upadrashta, a witness, a permitter, supporter, enjoyer, the great Lord, and also the Supreme Self. Paramatma. Now, outstanding. Now, you got to understand what he's saying is exactly what we are learning. When you surrender to the totality, 
when you identify with the larger self, providence takes care of you. We learned the other day, last satsang, that when you surrender, that is when you get help. We took examples. So you go back to that. Now, what this 13th chapter, 23rd verse is saying is, the, okay, let me put it first that, You can call it Brahman in the context. You can call it the totality or you call it the providence. You can also take the concept or Messenger of God, which is your inner conscience. So what is the role of the totality? What is the role of Brahman? What is the role of God or the messenger of God? You can understand it from your own conscience or the Almighty. So... First, he says, Upadrashta. Upadrashta means it is a witness. Then he says, Anumanta means Anumati. I permit. He says, I am the permitter. The third, he says, Bharta is supporter. Then he says, Bhokta, enjoyer. Then he says, what does he say? Sudama, what is he saying? Is it the Ishwara next? The translation? Enjoy. Then it's the Maheshwara. It's the Supreme Lord. And then Maheshwara is Supreme Lord uh, and the Paramatma. It's the Supreme One, two, three, four, five, six. The Atman or the conscience plays different roles in each individual. Now, what role it plays is based on three conditions. One, two, and three. The three conditions is whether your actions are selfish, your actions are unselfish, or your actions are Selfless. Get to understand this. So based on the, the nature of your actions, hold on to the screen for a while. Based on the nature of your actions, your actions can vary from the grossest, which is grossly selfish, to the highest, which is purely selfless. So when you are Purely grossly selfish means every time, every action you perform, your only thought and interest is how can I be benefited? The only interest is your own well-being. You are 
whole attention is egoistic, selfish, gross. And in a selfish person, yes, ma'am. In a selfish person, the Atman is a mere witness. Upadrashta. He says, I have got nothing to do with you. You want to do, you do it, man. You do it, you face the consequences of your actions. Brahman says, I have got nothing to do with it. As when you are a witness to it, you are not interested. Ni karma pa. I have told you, you fellow, don't listen. You go do what you want to do. You face your consequences. That kind of an attitude. Disinterested. Witness. Careless. It doesn't care about your well-being. But the moment your attitude becomes more purer, the moment you become unselfish in nature, sacrificial in nature, step out of your own little cocoon of yourself and start thinking of others' well-being. How can I be of service to others? What can I do to make others' life more better? Or all the time thinking of my own well-being. What can I do? The moment you step out of your comfort zone and get into unselfishness, the role of Atman shifts from permitter. It starts next is, it becomes permitter. It starts as if we're permitting you, sanctioning you. Oh, I have given you the permission to go. It's like the child wants to go out to attend a party with his, with the, with his friends. The parents say, I don't think what you're doing is right. The child is grown up adult and is arguing. Okay, I have nothing to do. You go. That's your karma. That's the first stance. The second is, oh, I think the child is not doing anything wrong. I allow you to go. The, it gets the permission to go out and enjoy the time. So when you start your journey into spirituality, when you're becoming unselfish and sacrificial, the Atman changes his role as it were and becomes a permitter. Ah. It is the Anumanta. It permits. But the more you grow spiritually, you start blossoming, you become genuinely a giver in every walk of your way, you start sacrificing, you start living unselfishly. The role of the Atman from witness to permitter, it starts becoming, the next is supporter. It supports your job. Whatever work you're doing, it supports you. It's just not sanctioning. It gives you that prop. It's like a parent supporting every initiative of a child. One is to give a permission to the oh, you want to do business, don't do business. I think you're not wrong. Go ahead. Another thing is the parent stepping out of the way and say, what way can I support my child? It is not, it is far more than permitting. It is actually supporting the endeavor or initiative. The Atman, which apparently is a witness to a selfish man, suddenly starts permitting, you start supporting. And if you start blossoming truly in that path, spiritually, when you start growing, when you are true to the term of being a sacrificer, you start enjoying whatever you're doing. You become the bhokta. The very act of giving, you become a symbol of joy. You become a symbol of happiness because there is only one way to find happiness in life is through giving, is through living a life of service and sacrifice. So you become an enjoyer. There is no joy in thinking about yourself. There is no joy in your own little egoistic fanning. You can't keep fanning your ego and your selfish desires all the time. But the moment you lead that life of a giver, you start experiencing the inner joy. You become the bhokta. Oh, you, can't, you can't contain the joy of being in a path of spirituality, of genuinely trying to uplift others. You're not doing it for yourself. In fact, anything that you do is you do for others' well-being. That kind of uh, clear-cut intent, you will get all the support you need. You become the enjoyer. And you go a few steps further, you become the Maheshwara. What is Maheshwara? You're the Lord. Lord means that which, who is a Lord? A Lord is one who lords everything. He is the true master. Imagine a CEO of a company coming to that particular division. Everybody is, 
oh, the chairman is coming. Everything is going to be inspected. Everything. He may or may not come to the department, but everybody is getting ready, decked up. Everything is done. Why? He is the Lord. He controls everything. He is the master. So you reach a state where you become the Maheshwara. And that Maheshwara is not arrogance. It is not egoism. It is just that sheer power that you get because of your spiritual elevation. Everything is added on to you. You get everything that you think of because you are genuinely thinking of the larger good. So if you don't keep evolving in this phase from where the Atman is a witness to a permitter, supporter, enjoyer, the Lord, that means you're not growing spiritually. So if you see this happening, that means you're truly growing spiritually. Because the Atman is very true. What is true to? Atman is very true to what? Pass the mic to Nishama. What is the Atman true to? No. no. The answer is on the board. Atman is true to what? I want to talk to her. No. To your inner conscience. See the Atman at the absolute level yes. or the conscience at the relative level. If you can't think of Atman, think of the conscience. Okay? Got it. What is it Atman true to? Your conscience then. See, a mellowed down version of the Atman is the conscience. Right. You can replace the word <coughs> Atman with conscience for better understanding of the concept. Mm. Right? My question is, the Atman is true to what? Okay, the whole classification from a witness to the Supreme Self is based on what? On your behavior. On? Your own behavior. What do you mean behavior? Your nature like of your nature. actions, yeah. right? Right. The, the character of your personality. Correct. Right. It's not the way you conduct, the character. I can easily camouflage my character by that's conducting true. myself in another way. True. But that's not the reality. The reality is what's your character? Poor nature. Your true nature. So the Atman conducts itself, expresses itself based on your nature of actions. Atman will not go wrong. Atman can never go wrong. So the truth presents itself based on what you are. <laughs> you get it? So you change the nature of actions, the totality will shift. If the world is a big challenge for you, then that means <laughs> if the world is presenting a great difficulty in whatever you want to do, but that means what? <laughs> what does it prove? That means you are very selfish. Providence is not supporting you. Everybody is left you to yourself and say, your karma, you go through pain, suffer, torture. That is your karma. You may not realize you're blaming why everybody is not cooperating with me. It is because of your own ego and selfishness. But the moment you become less egoistic, the moment you become less accommodative, the moment you become more sacrificial, the same world which did not support you, you it starts permitting you. It supports you. It encourages you. So the, the only thing you got to do is walk out of your own little ego and little self. Stop thinking of yourself. Pa. That's the lesson you can learn today. Sariya. Another. Da. Stop hmm. thinking about yourself. The moment you stop thinking about yourself, all the world will come and help you. Oh, nobody is coming and helping me. Why? Rumba selfish pony. Da. Logically, yeah. That's a logic. You get that? So, if you stay, extend that further, when you perform actions completely selflessly, where do you reach? You hit the self. You become the self. So, the, the choice is with you. What kind of actions you want to perpetrate? You want to be an egoistic, selfish person or you want to purify your actions and evolve? It has to happen. The law, the truth will not hide itself. It will, it will support. It has to support. If it is not, something is wrong with your work. Yes, sir. Um, 
if it is not supporting, could it be that there is still more purification process to go through or some more karmic lessons to learn before you are then qualified or you're vibrating at that frequency for the universe to then come and assist you? It, it boils down to that. If you're not getting support, it's because the agenda is pretty much my own. Means it's it's a hidden agenda. It's a personal agenda. It's not a it is not a, an agenda for a larger good. No, my question is, for example, even if we start becoming unselfish or selfless, and your motives are all pure selfless, in that case, that that doesn't mean that. You're, you've burnt out all your old karma. You you still have to repay previous karma, which can come in the form of a lesson or difficulty or whatever. It's like things are not flowing at that particular time. No, you're going hot and cold. If you are if you are getting support of providence, that means there is that karma has been burnt out. You're getting the good karma of your good actions. See. When you, if you were to analyze what is your present, present is said to be the destiny. The word destiny means the present. You understand that, don't you? The present destiny is an effect of your past actions. Past, I'm not necessarily saying your past janma, but it is all the time referring to this birth. Don't go to the past birth. Don't shoot in the dark. Think of what you have done. But since none of our actions are entirely selfish or entirely unselfish, I don't, don't want to include selfless because it's impossible to perform selfless actions. Unless until a very purely selfish, unselfish man can only think of performing selfless actions. Otherwise, you can't perform selfless actions. It's the highest of action. Selfless action is a motiveless action or a desireless action. Otherwise, all the time it's one's own uh, selfishness. So since there is a mixture of selfish and unselfish, you will be continuing to bear the fruits of such actions, which will be pain or dukkha, which is sorrow because of your selfishness, punya or joy because of your unselfishness. So because of your selfish and unselfishness, there are these fruits that keep coming. But when you go through a phase of life that there's only punya, only meritorious experiences, you're enjoying merit, that means you are sowing the seeds of unselfishness. Whatever selfish actions, if at all, there are a trace here and there, that will go. You may have a disturbed sleep, you may go through ill health, you may have hiccups of life, you will have health challenges you will have, relationship challenges you will have, emotional challenges you will have, challenge with your staff, you will have staff challenge with your neighbor. Some issues will happen, passing karma you have to burn. Why is it happening? Because selfish. The law of karma is very, very perfect, picture perfect accounting system. It doesn't go wrong. Whatever you deserve, you get. So if the so if you don't experience the phase of support, something wrong with your work. When you are doing that unselfish action or kindness, but still the happiness is ours. So that happiness is not a uh, kind of an selfish this thing? No. See, you are not, uh, good point. You are not doing action for happiness. Oh, I want to go on holiday. For what? For my happiness. I want to do an act for my happiness. There's a difference between doing for happiness vis-a-vis -vis doing from the standpoint of happiness. 
I'm already reveling in the joy of bliss and I'm talking from that standpoint. I'm not doing for joy. I'm talking from joy. That is bhokta. I am the enjoyer. I am the relisher. I am in that bliss. I am in that cloud. I am in that space. I don't have to do anything to find peace. If you need to do something to find joy means you're already unhappy. But if you're doing from means I'm already in it. So bhokta here is to refer to where you're already in that space of joy or bliss where you act. So whatever you do is, is, a, is a symbol of joy, a symbol of bliss. You revel in it. Ajay, just a minute. I think, Radhikar, you want to ask something? Yes, please. Ruji, a clarification from this understanding, the karmas which we are carrying from the past janma or it could be the present janma, where uh, actions of misdeeds. I mean to say we can wash out or we can say that we come out of all those with uh, pure selfless actions. Is it a direct answer to that? That every moment of your presence having been known that your selfless actions are going to take away the pains of past and the present janma karmas, knowingly, unknowingly, what human being does it. Sir, we are talking of you can attain moksha. What is enlightenment? Complete clean slate. Moksha is very much a possibility. You can strike a deal with moksha. Mm -hmm. Strike a deal, sir. You might successfully get that contract in your favor. What? Moksha is my contract between me and God. I want to get there. Can I get there? So, in terms of possibility, one can get to the highest state of enlightenment. So, it is just a question of what is the nature of my actions that I am performing day in and day out. If I keep fueling selfish actions, if I keep fueling I and mine in every action I do, you are only feeding your selfish karmas. But if I continue to fuel my unselfishness, since I am not fueling my selfishness, whatever has been fed, that will exhaust. It's like the fuel in the tank that has to get burnt out. But since I am not filling that any further, I am fueling self unselfish, you will start experiencing that that growth you will start experiencing as the ladder tensions. I mean to say that, uh, sorry to Guruji, is it that we will make the burning faster? Or we, uh, what I mean to say, we trying to, let me put across the no, state. No, I know power. what you are trying to do, you are trying to tamper with karma. No, no, I'm not trying to, no, 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 I'm not trying to tamper the no, karma. I can sense the tampering no, here. You're no. trying to do some mischief there. Can I do some mischief with the karma? Nothing can be done. If it has to happen, it'll happen. First of all, we don't know what actions we have done in the karma. <laughs> ah, <No. thank> God. <laughs> we don't know what we have done, do we? We don't know. It yeah. doesn't know. So sometimes where I come, a small incident where somebody in the carpentry work, he cut finger. So the immediate reaction to him is that he was in the past Janma, a butcher. So that Who action is... Was it your lecture to him? No, no, no. <laughs> All are becoming half crews here. <laughs> no. huh? I, 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 I met a carpenter, that fellow told me. Oh. Okay. I thought you were giving a no, lecture. No, no, no. Ah. So, okay, that what I'm trying to say that he here in this Jerma, having been known that selfless actions are going to take us to a moksha, also eradicate the karmas what we've done in the past. That's what my life is. You can't eradicate the karma. Your only way of eradicating is experience the karma phala. If you're talking of a carpenter who cut his finger, why is he lost his finger? Because some karma he must have done. Hmm. You know, my guru talks of a, an example. As a kid, he talks of his own life, how he could relate to that analogy. He talks of he being a kid. 
during his younger days, he used to go into the backyard and play with a couple of friends. Either it's his own personal story or he's narrating. I'm not sure that part. But he talks of one kid interacting with other kids and they used to play in the backyard. And the wild grew there and there were centipedes and millipedes. That was insects. One boy used to have some kind of a joy. He used to pick up those innocent centipedes. <clears throat> I think centipede is one which has 100 legs, right? So he picks up a centipede and start pulling each leg one by one. Some joy you got from that and he used to throw away that innocent little creature to suffer. Now, obviously it will die because imagine pulling out each limb of yours. One hair you pull out, you know what pain. But he couldn't relate to the pain of pulling out a limb of that innocent creature. These kids used to say, why are you doing it? Come on, yeah, let's have fun. He was very, he didn't mind what he was doing. Now, many years later, many years later, after he was a young working adult, he was on a two-wheeler. He was overtaking a lorry. The lorry was loaded with foundation stones. And it was overloaded. And in the turn, because of the weight, the latch opened up. That entire section of that fell on the bike and both his legs were chopped from his hip downward. Rest of his life, he's incapacitated. Now, when this information came to Swamiji, he could connect that act of pulling out centipede legs to his losing his legs. Can you escape the karma of that innocent centipede suffering? How many creatures suffered? Day after day, the karma will come, has to come. You can't eradicate them. The only way karma can be exhausted is through experience. You can't do anything with karma. You can only sow the seed for your future karma. What you already done, you have to face consequences. That's why I said don't tamper with karma. You cannot run away from the fact that you have sown certain seeds. You have to bear the fruits of those actions. So if they give an example, it's like I, trig I pull the trigger in a gun. The bullet will travel in the direction the barrel is pointed, right? If I am pointing the gun towards Sridhar, Sridhar, then, eh? Ah, Sridhar, then. Suddenly, like, na manu the tapir manu the tapa. Ena pannala. Ah, age var the. Eda the excuse kurt kila me. Ah, ena kisar. I don't know. You young and smart. Ella solrangya. Thirty five years. You ella sunnyga. You rumbo age aadu solrangya ella me. Adi kaga. Thirty five. Thirty five. Please note. So I point the gun at you and shoot. What will happen? It will, it will injure him or it, it may bring about a fatality. Having the bullet left the barrel, I have no control where it's going to go. Can I choose? Can I do anything with it? I have to face the consequences of the fact that I've pulled the trigger in that direction. I have control whether to pull the trigger or not the next or which direction to choose. But I have no choice to face the consequences of the earlier action. Imagine hundreds and countless actions you're performing in a day. How many actions have you performed in a day? Countless. Every action has a karma. And if you don't experience the later part of what the Atman plays a role, it only means you are selfish. If you are experiencing the support, uh, enjoy uh, the lordship, That means you are in the right direction. Lordship is not egoistic sense of authority, but just that where you command respect, you don't demand respect. That kind of a law. I, to, I told a chairman of a company comes in, he doesn't have to demand respect. Automatically, he earns the respect for the fact that he deserved to be there. And there's nothing wrong in, in, in him being respected for his position. The fact that he has served, he deserved, he's there. You can sit and argue that he is unfit for it. That is, you may complain because you are expecting, you are, in, you are disappointed with your life. But if he is there, there is a reason why he is there. If he loses that position, he doesn't deserve to be there. If he is there, he still deserves it. Who am I to say yes or no to it? 
but the fact that he adorns that seat, the fact that he's there, he is there, he gets the respect. He deserves it. That is the that's what I mean. The power and respect, the lordship. Then it's not a question of lordship, you become the very Atman itself. Greater than Maheshwara is Paramatma. You become the almighty Mahe, the, 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 the supreme reality yourself. That is when the ego is completely gone. There is no more ahankar, there is no more individuality. That is when man becomes God. You become that supreme Paramatma. So it is, ex the journey is defined by the degree of your selfishness. So it is important for you to understand every action has the tinge or a flavor or a large presence of selfish motive in it. It's for you to identify it and pull out that weed of selfishness. Any selfish thought is a weed. It must go. If you feed it, it becomes a full-grown tree. You don't give a room for it. Why you should not do it? Because you are going to face the karma, man. Understand. Don't worry of the world. It will haunt you. Can you imagine the centipede pulling and you losing the leg? How karma will function? It has to function. It will function. Just because nobody is aware of it and nobody is... Ignorance is no excuse. I did not know is no excuse. I did not know I touched a hot pan in the kitchen. I did not know that the pan was hot. The fire of law is not going to pardon me. Is it going to pardon me? Oh, this boy, oh, you did not know that it is hot. First time I'll warn you. Next time I'll, I'll burn you. No fire will say that. Will it say that? The law will work. Meticulous will work. So your ignorance of this is not going to protect you from your consequences. Now, how have you, what has been the nature of your actions in the past? Look back. With all the knowledge, we are imperfect. What would be the state without knowledge? Ignorance is bliss. That is what we are, we were earlier. Aap Qatar mein hai. Pani Karaji. You okay, sir? Yes. Could you pass the mic, please? Hello. Guruji, when we are uh, talking of uh, selfless uh, actions, uh, how do I explain uh, uh, crucifixion of uh, Jesus uh, Christ? Or for that matter, uh, Mahatma Gandhi was thrown out of the train or he was killed to shoot at. Because I consider them in my simple way. of They, they are the evolved, uh, maybe... They have already gone to that supreme self level or things like that. So why it should happen to them? That also is their karma. Because when a person is born, a person is born with some karma. The guy was born, I born with some karma. Past Janma, I born with some karma. Now let me explain to you because you're talking of men of realization or men of perfection. Why are they subjected to certain experiences? Okay. Now, when I start my, my life, I start at zero. This dotted is the past. The past karma starting point is the present. Right? Now, let's say, now the lifespan, let's say I put a lifespan as 80 years. Okay? In this lifespan, two Factors are constantly manifesting. One is your prarabdha. Prarabdha means it is your 
गायत्री मोवाड़ी से प्रारब्ध था It is the karma with which you are born to exhaust in this jenma. It is your destiny, right? The prarabdha is what your present destiny determined by. Your past actions. Is my prarabdha? I have to experience it. I have to go through certain experiences. Along with that, what I am born is purushartha. It is self-effort. Now, at the point of birth, there are certain prarabdha that are predetermined. What is the term for that? Is there a term for that, Gayatri Ma? Will you give a term? You know, Sethu Ji, in the term. In the at the point of birth, there are certain incomplete picture. You don't go. Don't take a picture. After that, I will take a picture. I also will give a pose. Ah, in a brief time, I will give a pose. But again, no. Let me give a proper pose. No, that is no pose. Put ring. Ah. He, you you will you will send to your friend uh, Mr. Kutti, right? And then you will send all all the, some pose I'm giving. He'll send to Kutti. Kutti will send somebody else. Kutti sir, random madela. Please don't uh, take whatever he is telling. Ah. Huh? Now what I'm saying is, at birth there are certain things known as prarabdha vasanas. At birth. There is something known at birth. There is something known as these prarabdha vasanas is your destiny. Panigraj, are you with me? And this is determined by past. So when I am born, I have some prarabdha. The fact that. You and I are born as a male. Is a prarabdha. A lady is born as a female. Is a prarabdha. You are born healthy, healthy, healthy. It's your prarabdha. Another person is born deformed. It's prarabdha. Another person is born in royalty. It's prarabdha. One person is born in penury. Prarabdha. You have no choice, but you have to experience and go through them. So that will run parallelly. This will run parallelly to Purushartha. Now, if you say at, let's say you gave a reference to Christ. So what happened to Christ? He was crucifixed. Why he had to go through that physical, unimaginable torture, being nailed on the cross? Inhuman act. I don't think such a barbaric act ever happened in history again. That to a man of that stature. But he had to go through that. Why he went through? His karma. He has to experience that little experience. But what he did, parallelly what he did. To imagine one line. One line is prarabdha. Other line is purushartha. So P one. I am putting P1 as P2. Okay. Now, with his self-effort, let's say at the time he is 50 years, he has attained enlightenment. So, rest of this balance 30 years he lives a life of a self-realized soul. So that is up to you. It is up to us how much purushartha you can put in. And in this lifespan, when do you want to attain moksha? That is up to you. How quickly you burn the fuel is up to you. Or you can keep adding the fuel or burn the fuel. But something which you have to experience, that can't change.
like i have to live with this body as a male i have to live unless suddenly i get a funny idea i want to change my gender i'll put an effort to change my gender for what you want to put an effort in wrong directions you please go and put it what result you get some fancy idea you want to satisfy your viewers that's all but is it going to help you change your life again i don't know god knows what happens after that so whatever one goes through when gandhi ji had to be shot he had to die what better death than that i don't know rather than suffering in the hospital with disease and pain and bedridden and people around you are cursing you when are you going to die ayyo ayyo and suddenly somebody smiles patak i wish i also get that death huh? smiling smiling before hugging you shoots you appa before you realize you are gone what a glorious death i don't know why you are complaining in fact we should seek that death rather than dying in the death bed in the hospital why you want to be in the death bed do you want to be in death bed i don't want no reaction from panigra ji therefore i'm saying i don't want to be quickly i decided i don't want to be he chooses to be that is his karma okay all of us have to die why are we running away from the fact but if i have to die in a better way die better way no why die suffering death is not suffering a thought of death is suffering death by itself is no suffering if you if you analyze it but most of the time we fear to discuss about death why you what will happen if i die the thought of death is fearful death is not fearful so if you philosophically philosophically if you analyze death there is nothing wrong with it so when you look at life this way some of these great men had led life in such a manner that they could wipe off their karma wipe off their which is known as sanchita the total karma social vasanas and let the prarabdha which is something they are born with they live the life so from age 50 to 80 it doesn't matter to them it's like something which is carrying on without their effort some karma they have to experience they experience it actually everybody is born with a destiny so that can explain any situation for that matter but what is in our not hand is prusartha not any situation if something is happening to us like for example i go back to the example sorry sir the example of that that young man losing his legs is it is purva prarabdha or something which he has created he started pulling the legs of the centipede it is not he is born with that so you simply can't uh, sir something which has to manifest which manifest the prarabdha vasanas will automatically get exhausted that's what they say i don't want to confuse you what they say is those vasanas will anyway get exhausted but you will not know which are your prarabdha which are not your prarabdha what is very clear prarabdha is that you are born with you are born as a man you are born with certain assets which is certain talents or talents certain attributes certain qualities which is your prarabdha because you have not done anything to acquire them in this birth have you put any effort no some of you are born brilliant like i am born with this prarabdha for this philosophy at the age of 15 16 i i i just took to it and it changed the whole course of my life i have not done any act i have not picked up a scriptural literature or studied till then but the first interaction to literature first formal exposure changes your entire life it just means how ready i was it is not a fluke it is an accident though but i was so ready for it that my entire life changed by one evening which i didn't go for it i went for some i was taken for some other reason it is my purva karma i have not done any effort for it zero effort purva janma i put all the effort the purva janma effort got me this now this janma effort will give me moksha that i can step up i will step it up i will put my foot on the pedal to get the acceleration so i reach my destination faster i'm trying to take you along so because i have got a big wagon behind me that is what i'm doing not no, i'm not going to go alone there i'm going to take you also come along ha ji and when you do that bharta bhokta maheshwara when you do that only you get bharta bhokta maheshwara i must mention i was completely flawed i don't want to embarrass uh, vijay ji and nishama this is the first time i'm meeting vijay ji huh? i have never met in my life 
own it sometimes i used to see online that also seeing online recently before he was seeing behind screen he used to only listen to recordings all i've seen is their lovely daughter who is in australia and she started in classes not long ago i have not met him and i am meeting nishama after 16 years i met her in hong kong then and after that now so there is no working relationship as far as the work is concerned and here is this man who comes on his own accord like he was wanted to visit he is visited he comes here and he on his own accord finds things that needs attention finds things that need upgradation things that has to be put in place so that the the entire effort the entire teachings get a greater capture because he is in the side of computers and camera and all that phenomenal support he is doing not to embarrass you sir but just to acknowledge a fact a reality how is it that you are supporting is there any understanding no is there any working relationship no but out of the blue somebody comes and he says i do i don't think this is right i think that computer has to be bought i don't know whether you noticed before even i come to know about what his plans are even before i even met him he they came to the ashram when i was not i was in ahmedabad so he came one day evening and to last not last week the, the previous week no no the previous to a fortnight ago the screen last week no no the fortnight ago the screen was broken because the the cleaner was cleaning and the screen fell the monitor screen fell it broke it cracked he hit from me but when i saw that the pictures were not seen the camera the, the monitor is gone and apparently the inside monitor also broke i don't know rendu monitor broke gayatri ma said guruji i don't think it will be repaired we have to buy it i said okay when we come back we will she didn't want to take a decision i said no hurry we'll come and look into it and this gentleman who came here last sunday he sees this dialogue he oversees this and without anybody's permission he immediately goes and buys and puts it there anast i don't even know why he has come i knew he was we were expecting them for a long time to come and spend some time here but i don't know his intention how is that and this is just one example i was completely floored by his genuine their genuine thought and intention to serve it is not i am not putting a quantity to it what i am putting is not something which can be measured with quantity that thought of service is beyond quantitative beyond it is pure quality is not quantity now why that support it has to be because of the work we are doing if that support doesn't come something is wrong with my work i need to go back to the drawing board and see why am i doing what i'm doing why am i doing something is wrong with me that i can i can do what i can do put in the effort to change my intention that is in your control you have no control over the fruits of your karma what do you remember how many what centipedes you pulled what butterfly you killed how many mosquitoes you killed what you did who knows you may get a joy in killing the mosquitoes you fellow whole night you bothered me now i see you sitting on the wall i am going to squash you so you go and kill the mosquito with such joy if you get the joy in killing the mosquito the karma has to come to you beware avas avas in malay in malay is called avas danger beware arish next time onwards you're killing a mosquito please think twice okay don't kill them with joy kill because you have to protect your health if you have to do that do it not with the joy abha i feel this so huh halal halal yeah that is what it is halal you must do so harish so you get my point isn't it 
Yes, Guruji, very well. Imagine somebody going and having non-vegetarian just to cater to their palate. I like butter chicken. I like ikan bilis. You want ikan bilis? Ikan bilis is a Malaysian, Indonesian, that part of the world's a delicacy. And we have experienced that. My God. <laughs> Indescribable that that or that smell of that is un indescribable. It is like this, not like that. I'm talking of Ikan Bilis. Please, you should explain. Ask any Malay, uh, any Malay Malaysian. You should, you you would have you know the roots. Go and experience it. It's a typical Malaysian dish. Ikan Bilis is dried fish, little 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 fishes, dried fish. And they are deep fried and it's eaten like a side cracker. For a week, it is all over Malaysian restaurants. You find it is everywhere. They have even what is called nasi lama. Nasi lama is a, is a very quick dish, which is with rice and uh, some uh, curry along with, they put a little dry fish. So you've seen, it's like a delicacy there. And when they fried, I tell you, and we used to have a neighbor downstairs who used to fry. I tell you, the whole condominium used to smell. Not our apartment. Unbearable. My God. How, and then in this delicacy. Now, can you tell me, you are doing that just for your palate. What? Karma you enter because you are enjoying at the cost of that innocent creature. You have destroyed their lives. So if you start taking account, start putting a math to all the actions, you will only gracefully accept, I think I truly deserve what I'm going through. You will not complain. Why? On the question will not come. Because God is only being fair to your actions you have perpetrated. Through karma. Karma functions through actions you have perpetrated. He has got nothing to do with it. He will have got something to do with you only when you are performing unselfish selfish, your karma suffer, he will say. Witness. So this is a, it's a journey. It's a journey where you genuinely are rewarded for your intentions. If your intention is to have no intention, you will be rewarded with moksha also. That's what we learned. Punya, apunya, vivarjita pantha. Spiritual path is beyond the path of merit or demerit. So if I can do my work, whatever my work in this institution demands me to do without any motive, if I can do it for my own spiritual growth, for my own I can think of self-purification. I can think of self-development or I can think of self-realization. That's up to my ability to conceive the goal. But if I can do this very act of teaching this knowledge, can I not do for self-purification? can do it. I can do it for self-realization also. Can it not be? You don't know what I'm doing it for, but I know what I'm doing it for. If this action is done for self-realization, it is... Selfless. If I'm doing for self-betterment, unselfish. If I'm doing for my own flattery and ego, it is selfish. Action being the same, examine the nature of your motive, the nature of your intent. That is will That will determine what karma you go through. That will determine how you are, how you experience conscience or Atman in you, in your life. So, so don't worry of uh, Christ and Gandhi. You can think of your own life because only you can mold your life. You can mend your future. Nobody can help it. They went through and did what they have to do. Yes, Ji. Still got a question? Forgot. You're already late. No, in sense. Anything in the context? Or are you okay? Yeah. Well, some thoughts, some questions. Uh, one is um, 
it, it reminds me of uh, when Krishna uh, decides to leave his body. He gets shot in the arrow in the foot. And that is a prarabdha of him uh, killing Bali by hiding behind the tree. And that sort of came back that caused him to leave the body in that way. Um, secondly is the question that I had was, if your intent is not there to harm somebody, you're doing it for self-preservation hmm. uh, or self-peace of mind. Say, for example, somebody's going through a divorce and one spouse thinks that, you know, how dare you leave me? You're breaking your promise. You're, you're not upholding your dharma. Uh, the other one thinks I, I need to get away from this because I'm being... I'm suffering. So the person that is experiencing the pain of the spouse leaving, that person's, if you have planted a seed unknowingly to cause pain on somebody else, how does that work? Because on one hand, you could say that the person is experiencing that because of their purshata. They didn't put in proper effort, which is what broke the marriage. On the other hand is... Uh, self-preservation but the intent is not to cause harm the intent is to save oneself from that experience so how does that work in terms of karma see you're only either punished or rewarded for your intent so your intent is that which uh, either you committed a sin or not committed a sin it doesn't matter uh, what another person experiences. If the end result of it is other person experiences grief or despair or sorrow, it is their karma. But you have no intent as you said, that relationship is not workable and I need to move on for my own growth, my own betterment with no intent of causing any inconvenience or any harm to the other. So as long as that intent is there, you are protected. You are not a good inka in karma. But if I am doing it just to cause you that pain, you cost me so much pain. Now I want you to go through it. You know what I'll do? You see what I'll do. If that kind of attitude is there, then you will infer in the karma. See, you know, there's a difference between a soldier who goes into war. When a soldier goes into war, he has the license to kill. He's recognized for his act of killing. He's rewarded for that act of killing. Strange it may sound. The whole nation celebrates by giving him a medal, recognition, for having gone to war and killed the enemies. So even an extreme act, you're not, you don't face any consequence. Yet if one mosquito you kill with... Uh... So why I'm saying mosquito, mosquito is, I've seen more of Vijayji with his tab than, his, than mosquito bat. He's a man with IT. And I'm supposed to see him with his with his uh, tab and work. But everywhere I see him, only place he's not carried that mosquito bat is in the classroom. Thank God. No, no, he is coming up with a suggestion that we will install some mosquito attractant machines. He's got something, he said. You're going to advise us that. It's pure unselfish. Ah, yeah, yeah. Why? No, no, I have no, to why? I have to kill the mosquito to protect my wife. No, why don't you say it's selfless? Why, why, why are you stopping it? Unselfish? Exactly, selfless. So it's only for your to make sure she sleeps well, I have to earn that oh, karma. That it's okay. That is, I mean, absolutely, you better deserve it. <laughs> yeah. So, but Guruji, uh, when we are talking of intentions, that intention can be a reflection of your profession or your value system. For that okay. matter, we give the example of soldiers. So, similarly, uh, supposing somebody is doing something, as he has told, so whether he is performing the right thing or he is performing, well, he is adding to his uh, this thing, negative uh, this thing. As far as he is concerned, he doesn't have a desire to kill. In fact, on the contrary, you when you address, when you connect with people from the army, they are very, very pious people, very sattvic people, very, very mature mind. They are very... That head, head, headquarters of theirs is very, very well well placed, well positioned. But they, they may take a weapon and kill. It's not that when they come back from war, they have the desire to kill everybody in the city also. 
they don't carry it forward no they are normal people the moment they take on the robe so they're playing on the role as a soldier or a, or a, a commander a commander is meant to kill he has, doesn't think twice to kill hey my question is slightly different uh, like when i go to a war field they have to kill uh, but supposing don't do that ntpc no oh you so guru ji said kill i have uh, we can't do that but uh, supposing uh, a person is facing an interview and he is assessed for what type of attitude he is having whether he is fit for military this thing or not he is asked a question this is a live question i am sharing one of my experience uh, you are there in a hostel room attached to a bathroom or things like that you wake up in the middle of the night and you go to the bathroom and you see a python hmm. what you are supposed to do the person who got selected he thought i have to kill him Oh. the python has not done anything wrong he is there by chance or something like that but that attitude he that i see job. a python I, he got the he got selected this is a question of whether he is having the right frame of mind to join the army or oh. not i my 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 concern is they are sharing the room imagine other fellow also is in the bathroom and he didn't lock the door I, the door is not locked i enter the bathroom and they shoot that fellow are okay? no it's a question of uh, attitude mental aptitude is something which uh, a person has to pass through when he is we, we are trying to interpret a, a, an experience or a situation which can be perceived differently is rather sir i tell you the challenge in a way i'm having to clarify to you or i may not satisfy you the reason being you should never understand a, a concept through an example which is what you're trying to do you understand the con concept and then fit into examples to elucidate further you understand the concept you are punished or rewarded for your motives that's all you may take examples to understand it but don't understand the concept through an example because example can always be misinterpreted or miss or interpreted differently not misinterpreted like we are trying to interpret that context differently which may not be right he he actually end of the day he got the job of uh, a soldier so we can say oh, what did it is wrong or what the selection was wrong it's not right on our part sitting here to say that so always go with the concept and then try to fit into situations and examples that way you would never go wrong okay ji okay vijay ji Huh? Sometimes, without knowing any reason, they are punished terribly. For example, I have I have not done knowingly anything harm to anyone for sure. How sure are you? Whose question is this? Ah. Huh. But all of a sudden, how I become? What is this? Ah. Huh, okay. unknowing what i have done i don't know what is it called i can understand the the context you are asking it could be a purva karma you may not have done anything to deserve no could be a purva karma you have lost it or you have to find out what have i done it's not for anybody to uh tell whether it's your purva karma or you have something done to deserve it but the fact that you have got it that's why i'm saying if it could be a praradha karma which is which you have done in the purva karma purva janma you have to go through it or you could be it, i so you can't so if i am experiencing something i can't say it is my purva karma or janma karma how can you say that like that gentleman who lost his limbs can we say it's purva karma or this janma something has done you can it's impossible to identify that so therefore they say in the there's a quote by christ he says resist not evil he says resist not evil evil is the karmas that you experience when anything negative happens you don't resist it, it is coming your way because you deserve it. just like you gracefully receive an applaud gracefully receive criticism also don't don't resist it's coming your way because you deserve it 
if there's a failure in your life, you deserve that failure. Take it as gracefully as you celebrate success. So that is how you can deal with life. See, it's not as much as what you're going through. What philosophy tells is how you're dealing with it is what it is. If you are all the time thinking of what I'm going through because of past, you're a pessimist. What I'm going, how I'm dealing with what I'm going through, you're an optimist. I, it is in my hands how I can deal with the problem, isn't it? I can complain and I can suffer or I can say, let me use this as a challenge to work on myself. How I deal with it is my capacity. It's my purushartha. So how well you use P2 is in your hands. P1, you have no control. P2, use P2 to work. That's where this knowledge comes in. It gives you the impetus. It gives you the an advantage to be a creator, a producer, not only be a product. Why should you be a product of your past? You should be a producer of the future. So you, if you want to be a product, you will be a pessimist. Because something gone wrong in the manufacturing. Product is a failure. Are, my life is a failure, life is a failure, life is a failure. Right? Pessimistic. Producer, ma. Produce, banango. Do what you want to produce. Just because your past product was a failure, doesn't mean your future is going to be the same. You'll be a producer, philosopher. The moment you become a producer, you're a philosopher. A product, you're a failure. Okay. Yes, yes, sorry. Use the mic, pa. You see, we need more for the floor, especially when numbers are there. That's why I said that. Huh. So you say the impact of P1 cannot be escaped. The impact of the previous karma that you've done. So can we use P2 to delay the impact of P1? I see that Srinivas Reddy has successfully influenced your thought process. <laughs> tampering going on, too much tampering going on. Ramji, what is going on here? Please, we need to isolate, isolate Srinivas ji for a while. Suddenly he comes and he'll, one and a half hour I spoke. Nothing got into his one statement. Mm -hmm. Srinivas Reddy said he is hold on to that. Please help Ramji. That is, a, that is the problem with engineers, sir. They always want to fix things. Problem with engineers. Okay, thanks, sir. That is what we wanted. See, you, you're saying, can I use Purushartha to delay? When the seed, you have planted the seed in the lawn, in the garden, or the, you have planted the seed in the soil, can you delay its germination? Delay Panamudi Ma. Uh, last Ramji, he's the head of uh, Seedworks. Uh, Seedworks, Anger. Where is Mr. Venkatram? Dr. Venkatram. Dr. Venkatram, can you please tell whether we can delay the germination? He will say, Yes, I'm in trouble now. No, we can't. Uh, it has uh, to go thank through. Thank you very much, sir. Mute him. We don't want any more answer from you. That is what we wanted. Anger, why can't we see you? Dr. Venkatram is the is a chairman of Seedworks International. So he I is... have a internet connectivity issue. Uh, the, Sorry, internet is, the internet ah. is unstable. Yeah. Uh, no problem, sir. But your, your answer is very stable. I am also very stable after that. I would have been unstable if you said yes. Now, you can't. You have planted the seed. It has to sprout. So, go back to the example I have said of pulling the trigger in a gun. You cannot do anything because the moment the trigger action, the bullet has left the barrel. You can't do anything with the gun, with the bullet. It will go in the direction you pointed it. That example seals your question. You can't do any amount of effort. You think you can't undo what you have done. Oh, I did not know. You better know where you shoot. You can't simply take your gun and start shooting wherever you want. The court also will say, just because you don't know, that doesn't mean you're punished. End of the day, that fellow is dead. Who's responsible for that? Uh -huh. 
you better watch out that so purushartha is not meant to undo the past is meant to build your future so use your efforts wisely uh now son then father sari there is a community class going on ah uh, sridhar ji here go hey uh, guruji uh, oh mark please one dot here sridhar ji is coming in between uh, okay little <laughs> gap between the family question ah uh, yeah guruji uh, Now the scripture guarantees that by putting the best efforts by name of the purushartha uh, certainly in this life itself uh, we could reach the kaivalya the salvation or does it, even it may take maybe next birth also does the shastra uh, the scriptures guarantees us that by doing the best efforts in the in the path of uh, whatever we are learning self efforts uh, purushardhas in this life are we sure that we'll realize the uh, brahman beyond doubt. beyond doubt there is no doubt that the shastras are the authority whatever is being said here uh, it is shastras are the authority there is no doubt about it you can to that extent you can trust me sir anything other than whatever i say after i get off the asan you don't trust me you question everything even you also question but whatever i say sitting on this asana or peetham what you can say it is a it is a seat of knowledge and i can't afford to speak the lie outside i speak quite a bit of lies so better watch out once i'm off stage pushpa ma for 35 years i've been lying in fact they say the fact that you're born as a human you have gone through the great journey of evolving from the other births you come to this human birth and amongst the human beings what is the percentage of those who have the very thought of spiritually evolving so that itself in fact they say the fact that you have a chance to listen to the gita you know here we have not even we have taken one verse and close to one and a half hours we are twisting and you can still keep twisting something is there only one verse we have just quoted and we are twisting before the class 25 minutes we are chanting 23 verses we chanted so look at the difference but even to lend your ears to listen to geeta chanting to listen to the geeta itself we have done anek janma punya they say shastra is saying that so it is indeed an extraordinary privilege extraordinary karma you have done to have got an opportunity to think of the higher forget trying to reach there so if someone is genuine and i believe you are genuine in your attempt and effort to know this knowledge or learn this wisdom if there is that benefit of doubt there is very much possible that you can attain moksha in this but then it depends on the kind of effort you are putting and also where you are but put in the effort na chirena along these are the words the shastras use na chirena means very soon you'll get to the self in fact in the uh, in the sir in the 10th mantra can you share that the the translation of the 10th mantra if you surrender to me he says kurvan siddhim vapsasi you shall attain perfection ha huh? how many places in the text that he say perfection is what moksha you surrender to me you do your karma not for the sake of your ego you think and surrender to for my, my sake you will attain perfection there you see does it not say this here this janma he doesn't say next janma this janma you attain perfection iha in the shastras you see the word iha english uh, sanskrit word iha means here in this birth you can attain moksha so very much a possibility very much a reality up to you whether you want to make it or not hmm. last question sir pasi gurudev yeah uh, this is uh, guruji this is in continuation with heart uh, hari asked yeah. so we can't delay the germination of seed but not all seeds germinate at the same speed Correct. there are some seeds which germinate in 3 days there are some seeds which takes longer period so here if i see seed as a karma so there are some karmas which are very soft so based on that will we have the impact in our future life 
don't talk of future life talk of this life only. okay current life yeah you don't know what you have done until you get the fruit hmm. so the here delay of uh, germination depends on the seed right possible it took so long for that fellow to lose his limbs okay as an infant uh, sorry as a, as a young boy he was playing with those centipedes 10 15 years later he lost his legs we don't understand why it takes so long yeah but that the depends karma will, will haunt you so the time delay is it because of the intensity of karma what he did possible okay. there are other karmas which i have to be ex experienced is on q qatar mein hai but at that age of small boy without knowing only he would have done it right it's out of ignorance so even that will have so much of impact in Absolutely. ignorance of the law is no excuse the gravitational law will work whether you know it or not right. if a child jumps the law of gravity will not excuse him excuse you're punished by the law right. i took the example of fire correct if the law works for the terrestrial level the same law will work for the spiritual level as well sir world is governed by external laws like physical chemical biological i talk this in my workshops right corporate workshop external laws govern the world internal laws govern an individual just like the external laws are working meticulously so also the internal laws govern an individual meticulously and if you don't follow the law you're punished by the law not for breaking the law write down that statement sir yeah write down you are punished not for breaking the law you are punished by the law itself when i jump and the law of gravity nobody else comes and punishes me the law of gravity itself punishes me so when you don't follow the law you are punished by the law not for breaking the law so when you do wrong deeds the law of karma itself punishes you nobody else has to account you for that actions and ignorance doesn't protect you thank you ji thing we are really overshot our class today but sometimes it justifies because i wanted to take the the questions in the in the context okay oh pur namada pur namidam pur nat पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओ शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम